Hello, this is Ben Hushner from Curious Turtle. And in this Mocha for Final Cut tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to see how we can use the interoperability of the Final Cut Studio package to take data from Mocha for Final Cut, but use it in Apple Motion instead. So I've got my little clip here, and we're just going to use a few effects in motion just to finish this little shot off. But to begin with, let's go into Mocha for Final Cut. Okay, let's open up our little clip. So it's going to be close up girl. There we go. Uh, don't need to cache the clip. 25 frames a second, progressive. And my frame offset, well, I can stick that to one and finish there. So I need motion tracking data in Apple Motion. So why don't I just use the motion, motion tracker? Well, the simple reason is it's not going to be able to handle it. We're going to use Mocha's planar tracker to track objects that will actually to track the eyes here. And what they do is they go out of focus, they go off screen, and uh, they actually go very much out of focus indeed. And the motion tracker just wouldn't be able to handle that. So that's why we're in here. So let's create our first couple of shapes. Let's, uh, let's take the eye as it is first. So just come up to our X spline, and I'm just going to add another spline to our track here. So we have multiple shapes on the same track. There we go, and I'm going to come over to my layer controls and call this eye track. Down to my motion, turn off shear because I don't need to use shear, and I'm just going to track forward. Now we're not going to get too deep into the basic controls of Mocha for Final Cut in this tutorial. There are other tutorials that are going to do that. But if we take a look here, we can see that even though my eyes are going off screen, the Mocha Tracker is still able to pick these out without any trouble at all. In fact, just at this moment here, I'm just going to bring this down a little bit. We might need to start to adjust our shape a small amount as it's going completely out of focus and completely off screen. Now the great thing about the, uh, the planar tracker is if we move our shapes here to an area that's, that's still coplanar, so that's still on the same plane as the original, it's still going to be able to take our shape with it and we're still going to be able to get perfect tracking data out of it. There we go. So if we just have a little look back through there, our shapes look a little bit weird because they're keyframing between those areas. But if I turn my surface on and set the surface up, let's set the surface up on here. Uh, we'll take, um, probably take the nose as a good, a good marker here. So the surface, this is good for, uh, not only for checking out the quality of our track, but it's also going to determine where our tracking data goes. So the center of this surface, if we're just tracking one point, it's going to be from the center of this surface here. We'll take a look at that and that looks pretty good. I'm going to turn the grid on just to, to make sure that that's actually looking nice, but do you know, that's straight away. Perfect. We don't have to do any adjustments to that at all. Cool, so I'm going to export out my tracking data and I'm going to take it out as Final Cut uh, Basic Motion. Just save that up. And let's just save it in the right area here. So let's call this, uh, let's call this eye track. Okay. okay, and let's come into Final Cut. Okay, so back in Final Cut, let's import that as an XML file and and let's find our XML file here. Let's eye track, choose that. Just going to leave all of this set to the default here. And here it comes, pops into my little browser window. I'm going to give this a decent name. So actually just call this eye track. That's fine. Bung that into my footage. And let's place this on the timeline. Okay, so on the timeline here, it looks like it's uh, tracking away, but this is just a stepping stone to actually what we want to do with it. So we're not going to do anything with it in Final Cut. I'm just going to right click or uh, control click and just send that to a motion project. 
let's save this as uh, 80s trash. So now we have our project in motion and it's got all of our tracking keyframes in there, which is going to be perfect for us to use it. So let's show a couple of ways of just uh, preparing this. I can hit F5 just to bring up our, our layers control here. And the first thing I'm going to do is just duplicate my uh, my footage here. Call this top one original. And just come into the inspector and reset all of the, uh, the properties there. Because I just want the top one completely uh, untouched. And this one here, this is my tracker. So this is all the tracking data that I'm going to use later. So let's just turn that off for the time being. So let's now start to add a few effects to this. Um, I'm going to duplicate my original here, Apple D, and I'm going to call this uh, Soft Glow. And I'm going to apply a little filter to this footage here. Let's turn this and fit this to the window so you can see what's going on a bit better. So under Blur, let's choose a directional blur. Let's really boost this up so you can see it quite a lot. Maybe not that much. We got about 55, 60. There we go. Let's change the angle. There we go. Around about there, about 140, 139. Cool. Okay. And let's change the blending mode using our heads up display. Let's change that to, to screen there. We can see we've now got a nice little soft directional blur screening over the top. Now the problem with it here is the effect is, is obviously far too far too harsh uh, for the moment. What I want to do is, is actually keep the face um, as it was in the original. So I just want everything else to be sort of glowed up and keep the, uh, keep the face as a, a sort of center of attention. So to do that, I either want to use a mask or a, or a mat. Uh, and in this case, I'm just gonna use a, uh, an image mask, add image mask here. And it's asking me what I want to use as my image mask. Well, now there's a good question. So let's come into our library up here. And I'm going to come to my image units over here. And we're going to have a look at the radial gradient. And just dump that in a layer on itself. Uh, just going to adjust radial 2. Because what we're going to do is we're going to use the luminance values of this radial gradient to uh, to mask out our glow layer. So let's take that up here. Now, if we come into the inspector, the inspector's got more controls um, than the heads-up display has got. So the inspector's got this lovely little thing called center, which is where our center is. So wouldn't it be nice to be able to track the the center point of our radial gradient there to the the track we got from from mocha well luckily we can let's uh, come to our eye track i'm just gonna hit f5 and f6 just to bring up our timeline here and come into our keyframes uh, let's just have a look at the position keyframes now of course there's many ways of doing this and i'm going to show you a few different ways of uh, of taking this data and applying it to different filters and effects uh, one way is just to take these keyframes Copy them with uh, Apple C or up into the uh, edit copy. And then let's come to our uh, come to our radial gradient here and add a keyframe to it first, to the center point here. So if we come to our keyframe editor here, we can have a look at the animated ones. And we've got our radial gradient center X and Y, and we can just paste data with Apple V or go up to edit paste and now you can see that our radial gradient is perfectly mimicking the track that we got from Mocha. Okay so how do we now use this as our as our mask? Well let's um just gonna hit F6 and F5 again to now bring back our layers and I'm gonna just order this up a little bit just so we keep a bit of order. I'm gonna create a new group and just call this mats and I can put my radial gradient in the mats there and just bring that down to the bottom. So all I really have to do is take my radial gradient, just click and drag it into my image mask here. Not made any difference. So let's come into my image mask. 
change what the source channel is going to be. Of course, at the moment it's set to alpha and we don't have an alpha on this radial gradient. We want it set to luminance. And at the moment it's just keeping in everything within the face area. So let's invert that. And now we can see, if we turn our soft glow on and off, it's leaving the face untouched. We've got a little glow.